This is CNN Breaking News. Welcome back to CNN. I am Alex Marco. We are following breaking news out of Los Angeles, where there may be a possible hostage situation underway at a Trader Joe's in the Silver Lake area of Los Angeles. What you are looking at are delayed aerial photos. I repeat, they are delayed uh, out of sensitivity to possible victims. Uh, we have seen people coming out of this store. Right there, what, what you're looking at are side windows just to the left of the main entrance. Uh, people coming out of those windows, going down a, a rope ladder um, about, say, 10 or 15 feet. Uh, we've seen several people coming out of the side there as well as at least one person coming out the front which you can now see on your screen there that's the main entrance of this trader joe's as people come out of that window as people come out of that front door they are running away and uh being uh, running into uh the arms of police officers who will surely be asking them what they saw what they heard so far uh, all we know from the los angeles police department is that this is an active incident uh, at the corner of hyperion avenue and griffith park they're asking people people to please stay clear of the area as we have been on the air we have seen the police presence around this trader joe's growing you can see heavily armed police officers right there with their guns drawn a little bit farther back the police have established a perimeter again they are heavily armed they have their uh, bulletproof jackets on uh, this is clearly an active uh, situation. I want to go back to James Galliano, our law enforcement analyst who uh, spent decades in the FBI, led a SWAT team, uh, worked on hostage rescues. James, what can we take away from the facts? I mean, beyond the, the very good news that it appears that uh, several people at least have come out of, uh, out of this Trader Joe's unharmed. Is there anything we can learn from that? Well, I mean, absolutely. Obviously, you, you, you count the number of, of innocent souls that you can that you can save or, or rescue or get extricated in a situation like that. Uh, that's number one. But number two, they are a wealth of human intelligence and and police negotiators and uh, police officers and law enforcement members. They are debriefing those folks right now to find out how many folks are, are entered the building. What are they armed with? What were their demands? Did they say anything? Um, what the location, the, the layout of the entire building is, upstairs, downstairs, what the floor plan is, things like that. Are there locked doors, wooden doors, where, where people could be hiding themselves behind and lock themselves in safely? Questions like that. And, and Alex, as a, as, a, as a former SWAT team leader, we, we work through these things sequentially, and there's three things in this order that have to be done. The first is crisis resolution. We have to get in there and interdict this and stop the person who's potentially trying to harm innocents. The second is consequence management. God forbid that there's a fire or God forbid that, that the person that was perpetrating this had explosive devices where you'd need a, a, a bomb squad and, 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 and those kind of folks. And the last, important, but in, in, the, in the chronology of these things, the last thing then is the evidence collection, you know, trying to find out, you know, the who did it and the, and the why. What was their motivation? This appears, this venue appears to be a venue of opportunity. Now, I don't know if there was any previous history between the person that was involved in the, in the police pursuit that ended up crashing the vehicle and, and entering. I don't know if there was previous history there. That would be interesting to be looking up and to find that out. Police can do that by running a license plate and, and, and doing all the other kinds of forensic uh, behind the scenes work to try to identify who this person is and police may know who it is maybe there was a potential stop and the subject ended up taking off and that caused the police pursuit but those are all things that are being worked behind the scene the main thing right now is to prevent innocent people from getting hurt you want to get the innocent folks out you want to attempt to establish uh, communication with the subject if it's a barricaded subject and if it's not a barricaded subject but somebody who is acting as an, an active shooter meaning that is going about trying to take lives. Police have to make entry. You mentioned the folks that are showing up now. Now is when the tactical teams are arriving because they're not the first responders necessarily. They're showing up with the ballistic vest. They're showing up with the uh, potentially the mechanical or explosive breaching techniques that police may, may need to use to enter, uh, the heavy weaponry, right. those kind of things. So we're, we're moving into that phase now where we've closed in the perimeter. We've got a tight inner perimeter so we know that none of the, su the subject or the subjects can end up rabbiting out of the place. And then a broader 
uh, perimeter, the outer perimeter, where you want to make sure you keep all the innocent bystanders away and where you bring all the folks that were potential victims that are now witnesses for their potential debriefings, Alex. James, we have a little bit more uh, from the ground there. It, it does sound like this is what you have called a, a target of opportunity, meaning this was not the intended target. Uh, we are learning from the Los Angeles Times that has just tweeted that this incident began as a pursuit from Hollywood. So a reminder, we are in Silver Lake here, that this was a pursuit from Hollywood that ended with a car crashing next to this Trader Joe's. Law enforcement sources telling the LA Times that the gunman, and they only talk about a single gunman, opened fire on police officers and then ran inside the store. We have also confirmed that a 20-year-old female uh, has been taken to a, what we assume is a nearby hospital, but has been taken to hospital uh, in what they say is fair condition. So that's good news, combined with the fact that we have seen people coming out of this store. Uh, James, I want you to help me decipher what I'm looking at. I understand that you can't see these images, but what I am looking at is scores of police officers in their ballistic vests, and we're looking for any glimpses of good news right here. And, and what I'm seeing is uh, a lot of, a lot, dozens of police officers without their guns drawn, kind of standing around and, and standing about 50 feet away from the front of this store. Um, sh should we assume that their calmer posture means anything? I mean, if, if, if this were much more serious, would they all have their guns drawn? If, if I'm looking at, say, 30 different police officers uh, without their guns drawn standing about 50 feet back, what does that tell us? Well, Alex, I, I always caution our viewers that uh, if you try to distill too much from either aerial shots or, or uh, video camera uh, footage from the scene, be careful. Because just because there might be a relaxed posture on the outside, the police might have put an inner perimeter inside. And maybe they have somebody holed up in an office, but that office is surrounded so they feel comfortable enough on the outside, the immediate outside of the building, having that as their outer perimeter. And, that, and, that, and that's a possibility. So I wouldn't read too much into that thinking that they're – you know, there's some folks that uh, are standing around outside in a relaxed posture because this is the way we do law enforcement. If you bring one bad guy to the fight, we're bringing 100. And that's what's going to happen. Every law enforcement agency in that area, whether it's the feds, the locals, the state police, they're going to converge on that site because this started out as a, a hot pursuit, a police pursuit, which is exceedingly difficult and dangerous for law enforcement because you take a vehicle and you turn that into a rolling crisis site. The greatest fear we have is that that vehicle rolls into a residential neighborhood or, as in this instance, crashes into a business and then the person jumps out of the vehicle and enters that business. Now, the good news is you've gone from a rolling crisis site to a stationary crisis site. The bad news is we don't know yet the motivation. Was this person being pursued because... He had committed some heinous crime somewhere else, and he thought the police were responding to that, and now he figures that he's got to go out in a blaze of glory. That's a concern and a consideration. Is this person uh, had a grievance there? Now, as, it, as you pointed out, it looks like, by all indications, this was a venue of opportunity. He just ended up there after the police pursuit. That helps law enforcement again because he's not going to be as familiar with the floor plan, the location, uh, where people are. He obviously probably didn't do a, a, a casing job there, but there's still other issues and concerns and considerations. We live in an age of, of, of active shooters and mass casualty incidents. We have to automatically presume that's what's going on, Alex, until otherwise ruled out. And James, as you've been speaking, we saw at least two more uh, people, civilians, being run away from the site uh, by police officers. I just want to remind the viewers um, that what is being reported by the L.A. Times, the local paper out there, is that um, this is an incident that ended, or rather the, the, the incident started when a car crashed into the store. It was a pursuit from Hollywood, and they're saying that law enforcement, uh, opened, uh, say, law enforcement there is saying that the gunman opened fire on officers and then ran inside the store. So two more people, we think, from that scene. We've seen a number of others coming out from that store, which is all the good news that we have for now. Uh, I want to bring in uh, our other CNN law enforcement analyst, Charles Ramsey. He was the former police commissioner in Philadelphia. Uh, Charles, when, when you look at this scene, and I'm looking at a much uh, a, a growing uh, law enforcement presence, uh, 
both uh, medical and, and police for now. Uh, if you're the commissioner in L.A., are you just pouring every resource you have into this area? Well, uh, first of all, I can't see the images. I'm actually in Quebec City, so I, I don't have the advantage of seeing what's going on. But, you know, you try to get the resources that are needed there as quickly as possible. And then there's always a problem with an over-response where you have too many people there. Uh, and that can just cause more congestion and confusion at the scene. Uh, the key is to get the right people there as quickly as possible to be able to contain the scene uh, so that the individual cannot get out. Uh, if they need to go in and get any additional people out, they have the capacity to be able to do it. Uh, it's hard to tell. The initial response, you're going to get a lot of police officers that are going to try to move towards the scene, but supervisors at some point have to take control of it and start making sure that they don't have too many people. You still have another part of the city that has to be covered and protected. All right, uh, Charles, thank you. We, uh, I'm getting a little bit of, uh, of information from my colleague, Jordan Gazzardo, who is on the scene. He says uh, uh, that he sees an LAPD special weapons and tactics vehicle that has just arrived, in addition to seven ambulances, at least 30 LAPD, LAPD vehicles. And then the, the officers that, that he is seeing um, have their guns drawn and pointed at the Trader Joe's, not small handguns, uh, but a larger type of weapon. I want to turn now to uh, former CIA operative Bob Baer, uh, who is joining us. He trained foreign police uh, forces in hostage rescue. Bob, in a situation like this, uh, what, what, what do you... What, it, what do you do? Do you storm into the store? Do you sit back and wait? Do you try to negotiate? What's the approach? Right now, they're going to do, there's two choices. You can try to negotiate, talk this guy out, and if you can't, you have to prepare what's called a dynamic entry. In order to do that, you have to have good intelligence. You have to know where the shooter is, how many hostages. Is he barricaded? Is he in a safe? Where is he? You have to collect that essential intelligence, either audio or visual. And then you get the SWAT team in place with a lot of explosives, um, shields, and the rest of it and the right weaponry to outshoot this guy. Uh, it doesn't sound like it's particularly going to be difficult. These things usually turn out well, unless he's intent upon killing people, killing the hostages. But once you come in, the SWAT teams with a lot of grenades and a lot of weapons, it's over very quickly. But they need to set up and, as I said, collect intelligence. That's really key. Um, you know, this guy probably doesn't have explosives. He doesn't have automatic weapons. Uh, but you still need that intelligence to make sure there are no casualties. Because in a dynamic entry, it's not to kill the, the shooter, but to save the hostages. Right. We, we do know that he's armed. The L.A. Times, uh, again, reporting that the gunman opened fire on officers and then ran into the, uh, into the store. Uh, we do have uh, CNN's Jordan Gazzardo on the line. Uh, he is at that Trader Joe's in Silver Lake, where we continue to follow this possible hostage situation. Uh, Jordan, what are you seeing? What are you hearing? Um, I am at the intersection of Griffith Park Boulevard and Hyperion, which is uh, just south of the Trader Joe's. And um, I uh, saw multiple um, Los Angeles Fire Department ambulances, at least seven from what I could see. Um, they just brought in a um, LAPD uh, Special Weapons and Tactics Command Vehicle. Um, and also there were... Um, uh, LAPD that were crouched behind their vehicles and pointed towards the Trader Joe's um, with their uh, lar larger, uh, larger firearms, not their, their typical, the, the issue Pistols. handguns or whatever. But right. um, that's from what I could see from my vantage point. Um, I've been told that um, PIOs will be giving an update. And Smoke I'm trying people. to now I've just gotten, gotten in my vehicle to try to get to the location where they're going to be speaking. Um, so as, as far as just eyes on the ground there, that's that's exactly what I'm seeing or what I had seen was just um, uh, heavy, heavy police presence and um, also aerial support from LAPD. All right. Well, if you're just joining us uh, here in the U.S. and around the world, we are following a situation in Silver Lake, an area of Los Angeles, just north of downtown L.A. at a Trader Joe's uh, grocery store where we believe there is a possible hostage situation uh, underway. We have seen uh, several people coming out of that store. Uh, we have seen people running away with police officers. Uh, all we know now from law enforcement is that there is an active police incident. They're asking people to stay, please st stay clear uh, of this area. The L.A. Times is reporting uh, that this 
This began as a pursuit from Hollywood, which ended with a car crashing uh, next to the store. Uh, law enforcement telling the Times that a gunman opened fire on officers and then ran inside the store. So that does sound like what James Galliano has been calling uh, a target of, of opportunity. We also know that a 20-year-old female has been taken to a hospital uh, in fair condition. I want to go back to our Miguel Marquez, who's on the phone, who lives in this area, has shot. Excuse me. We're going to go to, to Bob Bear, who, as I mentioned just a moment ago, he uh, has trained foreign uh, police. Uh, excuse me, has trained foreign police forces uh, in uh, hostage rescue. Bob, um, I, if you're looking at these images with me, um, what is what are the police forces trying to do at this point? Are they trying to get in touch uh, with the hostage uh, taker? There, are they uh, looking to move in? What is going through their minds? Well, right now they're calling him um, and they want to get him on the phone as quickly as they can. Let him know this is not going to end well. Uh, the LAPD is very good at this. Uh, they, this occurs over and over again and they want to talk him out of there. Um, they want to convince him, calm him down. That there's no point in shooting anybody. That any shootout with the LAPD is going to end very quickly and very badly. Uh, in the meantime, they're giving their guys time to set up. Uh, back doors are probably locked. They're going to have to breach those. If he's in a room uh, and hold up, they're going to have to breach a wall there. And if the shooting starts, for any reason, they're going to all have to move in very quickly. But right now, they've got it contained. They've got the guy hold up. And I would imagine he's got at least a couple hostages. But that's what the LAPD is trying to find out now. Uh, and they're, they're, they're debriefing everybody who's coming out of there um, to figure out what, what's going on. Again, it's intelligence right now and calming down the situation as fast as they can. Yeah, and what we're looking at now from uh, new aerial pictures is uh, police putting up police tape even farther away uh, from this grocery, from this Trader Joe's uh, grocery store, uh, establishing uh, a perimeter uh, even farther away. Charles Ramsey, uh, you used to run uh, the Pennsylvania uh, Police Department. Is there anything such as a classic hostage situation. If this is a situation where the hostage taker was fleeing and uh, went into this Trader Joe's because he couldn't go any farther, um, is there any classic situation? Is this guy looking uh, to take people down with him? Would he likely uh, release uh, people and, and have a shootout? What, what are the various situations that we're looking at here? Well, I mean, it's, it's very difficult to tell. Uh, obviously, it looks like this was... Uh a target of opportunity. He had a crash. He saw Trader uh, Joe's. He ran inside. A lot of people ran out. The more people he's trying to hold hostage, the more difficult it is for him. I wouldn't doubt if he had uh, a handful of people, which is two or three, uh, if that many uh, right now. But there is no classic situation. I mean, everyone is different. Um, all I've heard so far is, is very accurate. They're trying to make contact with this individual, get their negotiators there, get the right uh, equipment and officers there so if they have to breach if they have to go in they've got the right people there to be able to do it shutting down traffic getting as many people away from the scene as humanly uh, possible and trying to contain it uh, this is a guy who's probably in a panic uh, state of mind right now he didn't plan on being there necessarily so you don't really know what he's going to do the fact that he did take a couple shots at police officers uh, tells you that he's very capable of, uh, of violence uh, hopefully uh, this isn't something where he's looking to uh, to harm anyone else, um, and and that's the, but you have to be guarded. You have to be prepared for that for that sort of thing. So right now, the key is to try to make contact and talk this guy out. And if he does have additional people, uh, hopefully get him out of there unharmed. Uh, I don't like the fact you got so many ambulances there. I don't know if they've got any information that you've got people that are injured or if they're just there on standby just in case. Uh, but let's hope it gets resolved with no one getting injured, but you have to be prepared for everything. Yeah, from our Jordan Gazzardo, we, we understand that there are at least seven ambulances on the scene. I want to read you uh, an update uh, from the LAPD. This is from Officer Mike Lopez. Uh, he says, he tells us that at 1.30 p.m. local, uh, so that was around three and a half hours ago, there was a shooting that occurred at the 1600 block of 32nd Street. A victim was an elderly woman and a young lady. The suspect fled in a four-door 2015 Camry. Hollywood Division of LAPD saw the vehicle and suspect and went in pursuit. 
During the pursuit, the suspect fi fired multiple rounds at officers. None of the officers were injured. The pursuit ended near the 27, 2700 block of Hyperion, close to Silver Lake Trader Joe's. The suspect crashed into a pole and fled into the Trader Joe's. So uh, this was a suspect who was fleeing uh, a shooting uh, that he had carried out. Uh, one of the victims was an elderly woman and uh, the other a young lady. Um, so that is just now from the LA uh, PD. Jordan Gazzardo, you are still on the scene. Uh, what are you seeing now? Yeah. Is it okay to where they are? Okay. All right. All right, great. Jordan, hey, can right you hear me? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Jordan? All right. Yeah, hi there, sorry. Now, I understand it's a very fluid situation. I appreciate you trying to get as close to, uh, as possible, but also, obviously, we wanted you to say as safe as possible. Uh, what are you seeing outside of this Trader Joe's? Well, I've just, I've moved up just a bit. Um, I'm just, uh, again, trying to get uh, towards where they're going to be giving an update. Um, I'm seeing, uh, again, just, uh, I'm actually standing right by uh, 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 Los Angeles Fire Department Ambulance. Um, also, the number I can count, at least right now, is about... Uh, five just uh from from where i stand um again heavy police presence um there's a the, the lapd tactical command van that's set up um and multiple fire engines as well um oh sorry step back yeah sorry i'm just i gotta step back behind the line um but uh yeah from my vantage point right now oh thank you um that's what i can give you earlier um, when I was just uh, south of the Trader Joe's, uh, there were LAPD that were crouched behind their vehicles. With uh, um, They had their guns drawn towards the um, Trader Joe's, um, but I've since moved, and um, again, I'm just trying to get closer to where they would be giving an update. Um, so that's what I can see, Our, um, and uh, I am staying safe, so um, just staying behind the police line, and um, uh, yeah, that's, that's uh, what I can at least give you right now. Well, that's very helpful, and, and, and please do stay safe and, and let us know when you've got something more. Uh, Bob Bear, back to you. Um, now that we have a bit more information from the LAPD confirming that this was uh, the, the end of, uh, of a pursuit, which we knew, but that, this, that, that the uh, suspect had already um, carried out a shooting in Hollywood. Again, there were two victims, uh, an elderly and a younger lady. Um, Bob, does this, does this make him more desperate? Does this make him more dangerous? This makes him more dangerous. If he's willing to shoot it out with the police, that's not a good sign. Uh, if he says he's going to execute hostages, they're going to take him seriously. And I would imagine right now the SWAT team is moving as fast as they can. And, you know, you'd say, well, maybe we should send the police in, the patrols in right now. But these tactical teams spend a lot of time in kill houses. They know what they're doing. Uh, and they come in with flashbang grenades. And they just overwhelming force. And that's what's the safest thing for the hostages. And that's what they're planning right now. No question about it. All right. Well, we're learning a little bit more from the LAPD. They just tweeted moments ago that we can confirm that there is an active barricaded sus suspect within a Trader Joe's in Silver Lake. An active tack alert, so tactical alert, uh, has been declared to ensure all resources necessary will be available. Please continue to stay clear of the area. Charles Ramsey, what kind of resources does this scene require? What do they need? Who is heading there now? Well, obviously the SWAT team, um, hostage negotiators, and depending on the situation as they evaluate it on the ground, they'll bring in additional uh, uh, people. You've got to have, obviously, traffic control and containment. But right now, I think uh, SWAT is probably taking charge, and they're the ones that will determine what assets are going to be need to, uh, needed to be brought in so that they can... Uh, resolve the situation as quickly as they can. Bob, you were involved uh, in, in training foreign police forces. I, I imagine a grocery store is a, a fairly classic situation uh, when you're talking about a hostage uh, a crisis. So if you're thinking about a small Trader Joe's with, let's say, 10, a dozen aisles, um, little ability for the people inside to, uh, to get out except for the front door that we have seen people coming out uh, the side window. What are you hoping that the people inside are doing? I hope they're crawling out. Um, certainly when the SWAT team comes in, they're going to be looking for them, anybody that's hiding. Uh, they're going to be coming in with night vision goggles. If the lights are off and they will turn the lights off, they will turn the electricity off. It'll be dark in there when they go in. That'll give the police an advantage. Um, you know, they're, they're, 
you know, it's but it's mainly right now locating the shooter and getting plans for that Trader Joe so they know how to get in very quickly. And especially if he starts shooting or executing hostages, they're going to have to move right away. Um, there's no question about it. this guy sounds pretty desperate to me. Uh, but then again, you know, if he just run in there, he hasn't planned to resist. He's at a definite disadvantage. I train people in terrorist situations where the terrorists set up to fight back against a hostage rescue squad. Um, so this should be quite a bit easier. But nonetheless, you know, it's going to it's not going to be easy with on this short a moment to get in there. Charles Ramsey, back to you. What, what Bob was just saying, I mean, he's desperate that, you know, he, he is dangerous. This is someone who is, is fleeing another scene. So if you are shouting through a bullhorn into the store or if you're able to get him on the phone, what do you say to someone like that to not only make sure that he doesn't hurt anyone else, um, but that he comes out alive? Well, it's not just what you say. It's also listening to him and uh, kind of letting him kind of talk to you a little bit, try to calm him down the best you can, find out what, what it is that's going on, uh, what he needs. Uh, has he been injured? Is anybody else in there injured? I mean, you know, you need to just try to establish lines of communication and some level of trust, if you will, uh, between the negotiator and this individual so you can begin to talk him talk him down. I mean, he didn't plan on being in Trader Joe's at this particular moment. Now, he committed uh, a double shooting. You don't know whether this was a robbery gone bad. Could it have been domestic related? I mean, you don't know at this point in time exactly what it is you have. But you do know you've got a guy disarmed. He's already shot two people. He's shot at police. Very capable of being violent. So you try to resolve it the best you can. Uh, so there's a lot going on right now in terms of the conversation. They're going to try to get a big, a, a, as good a picture of what's going on inside as they possibly can. How many people are there? Are you holding people? I mean, all those kinds of things. they got to try to find out. In the meantime, as Bob said, you know, people are looking at the layout of the place. They're looking at blueprints. They're trying to figure out what's the best point of entry. They have to go in. But if they don't have to go in, if they can get this guy to come out and nobody is harmed, that's really, that, that's really the best outcome. That's yeah, really that the is- best outcome. Best, best case scenario. Uh, again, the LAPD is saying that they can confirm that there's an active barricaded suspect inside that Trader Joe's uh, that you are looking at. We will have much more. We're going to take a quick break. We'll be right back.